Live. Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Stop F deodorants, blowing cream, spray, and stick, suave hairdressing, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now let's all play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. First, I want to say hello to all those wonderful people I left behind in Silver Springs yesterday. And then I want to introduce a man who gives a beautiful performance co-starring with Lena Horne in Jamaica and also distinguishes himself as a fine actor in the picture Sayonara, Mr. Ricardo Montalban. Charm, brilliance, loveliness, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Many requests for a recording of Pat Boone singing the Columbia song Roar, Lion, Roar with our next panelist. We're sorry we haven't any available, but we do have him, Bennett Surf. <laughs> okay. Speaking on behalf of all of us here, I want to congratulate the Hollywood panel that did this show so adroitly last Sunday night. They were awfully smooth. And of course, they had the advantage of our own panel moderator, who is about to step out here now, John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. It is a mark of celebration on my return from the West Coast, and it's so good to see the panel once again that I have some good news for you. You don't have to put on blindfolds oh. for the first one. We will have some occupations which we trust will give you some trouble. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Panel on God. We will now meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Sign in right there, would you? Mike? Mike Stepovich, right, sir? Very uh, firm and authoritative handwriting, Mr. Stepovich. Where are you from? Juneau, Alaska. Juneau, Alaska. Well, that's fine. We haven't had anybody from Alaska since I don't know when. Mr. Stepovich, the panel. Panel. Mr. Stepovich, will you join me over here, please? Tell me, sir, are you familiar with the way we keep score? No, I'm not. Well, every time you can give the panel... <laughs> Remember, he's from Alaska now, please. No inferences to be drawn or implications to be had. Uh, every time you give the panel a perfectly good, solid no answer, we flip a card. Ten flips, and you have won the game. Okay? All right, now let's let everybody in the theater except the panel and our friends looking in at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mr. Stepovich is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Stepovich, do you do anything that people watch? Yes. Uh, would you be considered in any way a performer? <laughs> no. <laughs> what now? Right. Time to go, Mr. Montel. Uh, do you work for a uh, profit-making organization? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would you say that your work was something other than a desk job? Uh, I think we have to, taking a basic term of reference here, give you a no answer, Dorothy. This Did people not... watch him doing what he does at his desk? Well, actually, it is uniquely the kind of thing which people watch, yes, on many occasions. This does not preclude the possibility that he might leave his desk, but fundamentally it would come under the 
characterization of a desk job. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Stavovich, you say you do not work for a profit-making organization. Is uh, your employer the government? Yes. The uh, United States federal government? Yes. Uh, are you up in, are you stationed? Do you do your work up in Alaska? Yes. Would it have anything whatever to do with the weather? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Do you appear at all in court? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Montalpa. Is this service that you render uh, a very, uh, is, is, is this a, a, a very useful thing to, to, to both men and women? Yes. Yes. Uh, must you come in contact with them as you render the service? Yes. Uh, I would, with oh. your permission, Mike, if I may call you Mike, say that uh, on occasion this contact, come in contact, and here I suppose you mean not absolute physical contact, mm -hmm. this contact would be reasonable and proper, but it is not absolutely necessary for mm -hmm. all of the, the uh, functions which are performed by me. I understand, sir. <laughs> uh, Mr. Stepovich, uh, do you wear some kind of a uniform or other clothes different than the ones you're wearing now to perform this task or this service? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you chiefly on the ground? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have an airborne desk. <laughs> uh, do you use pencil and paper ever in your work? Yes. Do you have a certain amount of authority? Do you give yes. orders? You have people working under you? Yes. But you could do what you do in that outfit. Yes. I mean, you don't need a spaceship or anything. Uh, could anyone on this panel do what you do? Or have done what you do now? Well, I am going to rule no on the basis that nobody on the panel, insofar as I know, is properly or sufficiently trained to perform the function. Thank you, John. That's very revealing. Hmm. That makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Stepovich, Alaska has been fighting for statehood now for a long, long time. Are you in any way connected with Alaska's fight for statehood? Yes. You are? Yes. They have appointed a couple of... Uh, Senators, that make believe senators that they're sending down here as though Watching they were members of the... Now, this is true. They're, they're, uh, <laughs> are you one of these uh, people that have been sent down here by Alaska to represent them in Washington? No. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> do you have anything to do with licenses? Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> You got a driving license? Yeah. Answer that question, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we haven't asked you if you work for the government of Alaska. They do have a government in Alaska. Yes. Um, Would you say that you are a government employee? Uh, well, yes. Federal. The federal government you work for? Mm. Yes. Yes. Are you elected to office? No. Nine down and one to go, Mr. Montalban. Um, He's not the governor. Are we uh, in the United States affected in any way by this work you do in, from Alaska? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's yes. possible. Yes. Uh, is this, are we affected uh, in a monetary manner? Possible. Mm -hmm. Through Fair. taxes, perhaps? Through taxes? Yes. It's possible. Through taxes. In other words, uh, we, the taxpayers, pay for your services. Oh, that's yes. 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 Definitely. We pay for everything. We pay for everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Kilgallen, I want to let you ask the next question, please. I am at a I'd like to call for a conference. Please. If I might. 30 seconds Ricardo. for a conference. Uh, Arlene uh, had a brilliant idea. Are you... Are you a very... You're appointed. He must be appointed. He's going to be replaced Governor Groening. Well, he'd be elected then. No, not, no. If, not if the governor was uh, died in office or anything he's like appointed. that. Do you have a very high office in Alaska? Maybe he's a Do you have a title other than Mr.? Yes. Well, are you governor? Yes! Yeah. Uh, I 
want to congratulate the audience, because I heard Bennett say, he hey, could be the governor, and there wasn't a Arlene whisper of sound, and Arlene, well, Arlene got it, too. It to I me. couldn't remember who was there now. I'm sorry, Governor. Uh, I published Governor Groening's book. I should have known this cold. Got, now, you see, you've got a publisher. Isn't that yeah. wonderful, Governor? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for letting me become familiar enough to call you Mike. I think it, it got him off a bit, but Governor Pepovich, uh, thank you for being our guest. It's a wonderful oh, territory. And uh, Alaska has indeed been seeking statehood, and uh, I think Alaska would make a very nice 49th state, and I hope oh, you wonderful. make it so. Thank Good you. to have you here. Good panel, that was a tough one, and you made it just under the wire. Now let's see what you can do with the second challenge. Will you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Sue Kraft, right? <laughs> and I hope, is it Miss or Mrs. Kraft? Mrs. Mrs. Kraft, I hope you won't, won't mind those eerie noises in this cold weather. Sometimes the wind whistles. <laughs> Where are you from, Mrs. Kraft? New Hope, Pennsylvania. New Hope, Pennsylvania. Yes. Mrs. Kraft, the panel. Panel, Mrs. Kraft, will you join me here, please? Tell me, are you familiar with the way we keep score? Yes. Fine, then that's that everybody at home and those who have braved the cold to join us here tonight know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Kraft is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mrs. Kraft, do you deal in services? No. Uh, small, if I may, thing. <laughs> we, we would, if Mrs. Okay. Kraft is willing, agree okay. that there is an element of service involved, yes. yes. That's very puzzling. Uh, do you deal with both men and women? Yes. Could anyone on this panel avail himself or herself of your services? Uh, this gets a little bit sticky after a while. <laughs> Actually, anyone on the panel could be an end beneficiary of the service well, that's all we as ask. the service is applied, yes. All right. Do you work indoors more than you do outdoors? Yes and no. There you are. <laughs> Sounds like rather an uncertain profession, doesn't it? Uh, do you move about in your work rather than being chained to a desk? Yes. Uh, do people watch you do what you do? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Kraft, New Hope is at the very door to Bucks County, full of playwrights, antique shops, livestock. <laughs> is, there, is there anything... Is there anything connected, is your work connected with anything b beside human beings? Yes. Are the things that you work with alive? Yes. Are they animals? Yes. Yes, now... Now I'm, we're back on the I whale. Wanted... Now the whale is a mammal, but there are no whales no. in New Hope. No, no, Ben, I, I want to be fair, and, and I'm sure Mrs. Kraft won't, won't mind. I'm assuming that the question is asked in the basic reference, animal, vegetable, mineral, and we give you an affirmative reply. It's animal in that sense. The animals are alive. Are they animals invisible to the naked eye? No. <laughs> what do you have in mind, Betty? <laughs> Two down a day to go, Miss Francis. Are there many different kinds of animals? No. Three down Just and seven one. to go, Mr. Montalpa. Are these uh, uh, domesticated animals that you deal with? No. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are they animal life without legs? No. 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 Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Are these animals, uh, possibly animals that can, uh, are, they, are they birds? No. Birds? Boys. No. Boys? <laughs> no. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Are they animals that we sometimes try to get rid of? Uh, yes. They're animals you wouldn't want to have around the house. Yes. Under certain circumstances, yes. Mm. You mean you'd like to have them around the house? Well, no, it's just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
No, I, I would say that the average household would not necessarily want to have these animals around. On the other hand... Are they animals that are sometimes exterminated? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Are they... Do they have any fur? Fur? <laughs> no. No I mean, fur. like mice no. have fur. Never saw a fur coat. Seven oh, no, down and three to go, smaller. Mr. Montalpe. <clears throat> yes. Uh, can these animals actually become a, a pest? Become a pest? Yes. Yes. To the yes. point that, as yes. you say, they have to be exterminated. Mm -hmm. Are these animals pestier inside the home than outside the home? <laughs> pestier inside a home than outside a home? Yes, yes. they are. Uh, these are animals that are, uh, that are, are visual, can be seen with we, we mm -hmm. the doctor before. Are they, are they uh, smaller than a, uh, about the size of a rat? No. Are they smaller? Smaller than a smaller. rat, I mean. Yes. Smaller? Yes. yes. Smaller yes. than a rat. Uh, are they, uh, did we establish the word insects? No. 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 Are they, is there an in, are they insects? Yes. Yes. Are they as large, large as a cockroach? In your world, we say cucaracha. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it depends on the size of the cockroach. Miss, <laughs> the first one? <laughs> they are cockroaches. Uh -huh. Are they cockroaches? Are they cockroaches? That's eight no. down and two to go, Miss Gilgallon. <laughs> They are not ever cockroaches. No. No. One more minute. To, but uh, Mrs. Kraft exterminates them, or has something to do with their... No, are we all with no, them? Uh, uh, no, uh, you do it. That's nine down and one to go, Mr. Uh, Sir. Mrs. Kraft, do these insects that you deal with, uh, are they able to bite or sting human beings? Yes. Uh, is it sting rather than bite? Yes. Uh, are, they, are they either bees or mosquitoes? Yes. Bees. 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 Yes. Bees. <laughs> That's right. Actually, uh, Mrs. Kraft is a beekeeper. We'll give her the last card anyway, just for fun, because I was just hoping Bennett would ask if you raised mosquitoes. I want to meet somebody <laughs> who raises mosquitoes. What fun. Mrs. Kraft does actually, uh, also, in the, there's a product involved that we thought she might go for honey, which is a beekeeper, of course, uh, she has as a byproduct of her wonderful labors with the non-furry, legged, stinging, smaller than the average size cockroach insect. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Kratz. It was nice welcome. to have you with us. Tonight. Tonight's mystery guest in just come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I do ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. All blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes. yes they are. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with uh, Mr. Montalban. Obviously, you are in the entertainment business. Si, senor. Ms. Gilgallan. Uh, are you most famous for being in television? Poco, poco. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think there it's so that you won't be misled. The answer would be yes and no. It would be pretty much a subjective decision as to which area had brought greater fame, one Could or another. Could we get him to make it? Beg your pardon? Could we get him to make the subjective decision? Uh, no, he shouldn't, I think, be called upon to make it. You can make it later on when, he, uh, right. when you're unmasked. Mr. Sir. The man who evidently plays strip poco. <laughs> oh! Uh, are, you, uh, are you at present playing on Broadway or on the verge of coming to Broadway in a legitimate play? Si, senor. Miss Francis? Well, you, we don't know whether, whether he is here or whether he's going to be here. That's correct. Uh, <clears throat> are you at the present time appearing in a play on Broadway? No, senorita. One down and nine to go, Mr. Hey, Montalba. That accent is wonderful. Uh, Maybe have you, uh, have you ever, uh, have you ever been in a television series? Si, senor. Miss Kilgallen. 
Was it a situation comedy? No, senorita. Two down and Two eight to go, Mr. Right. Sir. Is this a play that is at present trying out either in Boston or Philadelphia? Si, senor. Miss Francis? Uh, let's see, seventeenth doll is this week. Oh, Captain, is it a, uh, is it a straight play rather than a musical? Si, senorita. Mr. Montalva. I want to take a wild guess. James Whitmore. James Whitmore? Is that what you said? Yes. No. Three down and seven to go. Oh, boy, oh. Gosh. Dorothy? I just wanted to say that I have a Philadelphia spy known as my husband who says that the performance Mr. Bellamy gives in Sunrise at Campobello is simply thrilling, and it's going to be the toughest ticket in town when the play oh, comes Oh, wonderful. In. Yeah, yeah, here, here, much, Dorothy. I'm dead. I think I'm going to pass. Out? James? I can't think oh. of anyone. Uh, Just waste the question. Mr. Sir. Are you about to assay in New York the role of a former president of the United States? Oh. Si, senor. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ralph Bellamy? Ralph. Uh, Here's Ralph, been practicing Spanish all the week. Back. <laughs> <laughs> His Spanish accent right through to that. But I must say that uh, to get all the things Sunrise at Campobello, which is the play that Mr. Bellamy is now in and uh, starring in as, as uh, the late Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, will be in New York at the end of this month. But we particularly wanted you to be here tonight because this is also the month in which... Uh, something that was so dear to President Roosevelt, the March of Dimes campaign is on. And uh, I thought maybe you could represent them. I'd be very happy to, John. I guess, as everyone knows, the March of Dimes campaign is underway now. And uh, perhaps a lot of people feel that since the discovery and dist distribution of the Salk vaccine, the problem is solved. Well, it really isn't. Uh, there's still a great deal of research to be done with respect to cause and cure, and of course the rehabilitation centers in which the poor unfortunate people who are afflicted with this terrible uh, malady must be readjusted, uh, has to be carried on. And it does seem somewhat appropriate that I can be here tonight in this capacity, um, representing, as I do in the play, uh, FDR during the period uh, which he uh, battled this disease himself uh, in this play, Sunrise at Campobello, which is coming to the court theater on his birthday, a week from Thursday. So both FDR and I hope you'll be more than generous this year. Oh, good. That's Mr. nicely Mr. put. Uh, it goes without saying that all my colleagues on the panel and I also urge you to fully support the March of Dimes. There's a lot of work still to be done. I know right, about I this. I, I've got it second hand. I haven't been up that early in the morning. But I've heard <laughs> Bennett? Uh, I believe that authors never get enough credit, especially on television. And uh, I think, Ralph, you ought to say I, who uh, wrote Sunrise. I'd be very happy about. to say that Dory Sherry wrote this play, and it's a very moving and stirring play about uh, Roosevelt uh, during the uh, uh, years 1921 to 24 during which the, uh, he was first afflicted in the early years of his struggle with it. Mr. Sherry has done a remarkably accurate and sensitive and uh, stirring, moving job of it. Fine, and let's start things off this week anyway by tipping the rest of the cards over, and that all goes to the March of Dimes right. for your instructions. Right. Thank you very much, Ralph. It's right. wonderful of you to come and join us. Thank you very much. And Mr. Montalban, Montalban, nice to have had you with us. And panel, I must say, it's good to see the old regulars back, and I want to congratulate you. You got everybody tonight. On that uh, happy note, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, Mr. John Daly and Mr. Ricardo Montalban. Thank you, Miss Kingallan, a pleasure. Buenas noches, Ricardo. <laughs> Buenas noches. Oh, good my. <laughs> good night, John. We like being back ourselves. <laughs> uh, it's not real nice to be there. We thoroughly enjoyed, at least I thoroughly enjoyed the visit to the coast and enjoyed the idea that these old colleagues of seven and a half years would be sitting here in New York saying, hmm, he doesn't do so good, does he, really? <laughs> well, they did great. But it was a great trip. Thank you, Bennett, and thank you all for being with us on What's My Line? If 
you'd like to be a contestant, send a picture we can keep and your occupation to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. This is Hal Zinn speaking.